set sectional view. Remember that. You must remember that. Because this stuff out of production drawing, when you have to do this by hand, it's going to haunt you to the interview. Got it? You must know that this is an offset sectional view. Very important. These are probably one of the toughest to make <laughs> inside SolidWorks. It is definitely not friendly when it comes to doing this. So I want to show you how to do this. And I'm not saying it's easy. And I'll probably be good at making a few mistakes up here myself. So let's try it. An offset sectional view, you go to annotate. Is it annotate? No. It's under view layouts. It's under section view. When you click on section view, you get a dialog box on the left side. It looks kind of interesting. They have a regular section and a half section. Now, remember, SolidWorks came from the injection mold industry, so they should be good at sectional views, to be uh, honest, but they're kind of not so good at it. So we're going to go to section. We're not doing a half section. We want to do an offset. So the one that fits the bill the most out of all these crazy options, you have horizontal, you have auxiliary. Their term for, they, they don't use the word offset sectional view. You're going to get stuck maybe with an auxiliary sectional. If I remember correctly. See this? Oh, nope, nope, not auxiliary. Take that back. We're going to do vertical. See that? You don't see the word offset anywhere in here, do you? Okay? So it's a bit of a, what shall I say, guessing game. So we're going to pick this, this guy, vertical. See how it does this? You get this line, we're going to drop it right there so at least it's located correctly. Then among its options, you have something called notch offset. You have another one called single offset. Okay? And then you have a weird one that doesn't exist in, in standards called arc offset. Okay? Single offset and a notched offset. So we're doing what's called a notched offset. Write that down in your notes. It's called a notched offset. That is what we're actually doing, an actual sectional view that has multiple directions that it's going to go into. Okay, So when I click pick notch, it's basically asking me, where am I going to notch this to? See this? So I pick a node. It is the weirdest thing that it does. And I pick another node. And then I have to segue over into where I'm going to cut and then I hit OK. Then it's going to ask me, hey, do you want an aligned sectional view? Or do you want a foreshortened sectional view? So you can select ribs to exclude from the hatching. I'll leave it as aligned. And when I pass it over, you see that? See that? That's what it's going to look like. It's going to give me that. It looks exactly the way I want it to look when I hit OK. But it, it is which kind of sectional view? What was the term? You guys wrote it in your notes. What was what kind of sectional view was that to, according to SolidWorks? Offset. Oh, for us it's called an offset sectional view in the drafting standards world. But SolidWorks language? Oh, the notch? Notch. Notch offset have absolutely no clue why they called it that. Okay? You go online. You don't think notch offset outside of CAD conversation. Hey, this one's in Croatian. Next, if I'm going to do this, do you think I need this view anymore? I have this with a cut in it. See that? I have this sectional view. Do you think I need this view anymore? No. Correct. The answer is no. If I have this, I really don't need this because the same information in here is in here. 
The difference is I see through everything here, so all of my cuts are clear. Whereas up here, they're not. Got it? Now notice what SolidWorks also forgets in the standard side <coughs> of the house. It forgets to put in any center lines, except center marks. Okay? So you have to remember to do that as well. So I'm going to delete this view because I don't need it. I'm going to leave this view in, and I've got basically my front view and my top view and my sectional view. Okay? Now, detailing. If I go to my, where do we think I find detailing? From our conversation on Monday. Annotation, the tab called annotation. You do not want to drop in dimensions on, on your own. You want to use the model. You want to use the model dimension. Model items is important. You want the dimensions coming right off the model. You don't want to be manually dropping dimensions. Manual is bad, okay? When you pick model items, that's where the other piece of that handout comes in. What did I say? You're not selecting features, you want to select the entire model. Okay? And you want to import them in all the views. Down here you have some choices. Dimensions is the one I would pick. The other thing I would turn on is whole callout. Okay? That'll give you your uh, dimensions for your holes that you that you got that you acquired using whole wizard. The other thing that's on here, what did I say? You need basically everything on, if you look at this handout, everything but this guy. If you use this guy right here, that shows you the profile of the whole wizard, and it turns this guy off. You don't want that. Okay? You do want the call out for the whole. Just remember that. So you want everything but that. And eliminate duplicates is important because you don't want dimensions duplicated in multiple views. Once you do that, okay, I'll just pick one of the items, but just the entire model, import item into all views. You don't have to click on any of the views. When you hit OK, boom, it populates your drawing with everything that it knows. Got it? Did you hear the way I said that, though? It populates the drawing with everything that it knows. So whatever dimensions you assigned to your model. Remember I kept saying use whole wizard, use whole wizard, use whole wizard, stop using circles. The reason I wanted you to use whole wizard is because then you'll get this type of information where it says diameter 9 through all. Get it? Otherwise you wouldn't get it. So if any of you use a circle and extrude and cut all your holes, you're not going to get this fancy schmancy note. You're going to have to manually put it in. You know how much I love manual, right? People name the manual, fine. Manual? No. Ah, I know, bad joke. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to do that. Too early in the morning. Okay. So our goal here is to fix these. We've got these dimensions here. Everything looks good. The scale, though, is a little, it's still a little big. But let's see if we can move some stuff down. If I move my views down a bit, will I have enough room? I think we can get away with it. We just have to be efficient with how we detail. Got it? So I have a dimension here, the 22, which looks decent, right? Which is dimensioning to my, my hole. But the 18, for some reason, popped in over here. Okay? No, don't go to Smart Dimension and add 18 here. What do you think I'm going to tell you to do? I'm going to tell you to delete this guy. Then I'm going to tell you to go to Model Items, and this time, instead of Entire Model, you're going to select the feature. You're going to select this feature. And you see how it dropped in the only dimension that it was missing? That would not happen if I did not delete it from this view. You must delete it from another view first, because the priority is to eliminate duplication. You see that? Mm -hmm. You must eliminate duplication. You cannot have you cannot have the same dimension on multiple views unless your boss tells you to do it. Then, of course, or your customer tells you to do it. Then, of course, you do it, right? And our first scale, not that one. If you just pick the view, you'll get the choices on the left side. We're all going to get stuck using custom scale, but none of these. I'm going to ask you to pick user defined. 
and basically go three slash four, which is three quarter scale. I think you'll get a better, oof, even three quarter is really small. Seven eighths, that's slightly better. I'm picky because I want the view to be as large as possible. These two dimensions, do you think we need to leave these in, guys? Are these in a bad spot? Do you ever want to dimension a hidden object? The answer is no. no, never. So these guys have to be taken out of here. Now some people complain, why doesn't the software know these drafting standards? My 10 cents to them is, you know what? It's kind of good that it's kind of stupid and it doesn't understand the drafting standards 100%. That's what keeps you. I can go back to model items. And now I can actually go ahead and pick the features no dimensions are, are there. So let me pick the whole thing. Let's see what I got here. Import items and tool. Nope, don't want them in all views. But let's see, what have I got here? Maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. Actually, is it down here somewhere? You don't want your extension lines going. It's 15 is here, which is fine. Let me drag it to the other side though. So what can I do to fix that? Let's go into... I could drop that in, but boy, is that annoying. See that? Smart dimension, 25, and yeah, radius of 9. 